This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. Well, folks, it's time for the bites. Now, patching hosts, your base images, clients, services, devices, it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge for any organization, and it takes a number of cycles for any teams. In fact, it takes a bunch of cycles for my team to actually figure out the right way to do it and to do it securely and efficiently. Now, if your organization doesn't have the resources to stay on top of things, what does that mean for your security? What does it mean for all of your services, right? Well, what if there was a possibility of patch as a service. Could that help? What do you think, Curtis? What can I help? Well, I think we can all understand that patching, second perhaps only to choosing good passwords, is about the most important thing an organization can do to reduce the chance that there will be a breach. It is critical to isolate risks, to ensure that vulnerabilities don't become exploitable, and to ensure that workflows aren't interrupted due to allowing software to fall out of supportable versions. Now, the security risk is enormous. Verizon's 2022 Data Breach Investigations Report, which is one of the more significant publications in the industry, found that 70% of successful cyber attacks exploited known vulnerabilities with available patches. Problem? While everyone agrees that patching is important, it may not be urgent, at least not in the minds of the team. And when you, especially if you have a smaller team, those urgent tasks tend to mount and mount and mount until you have no time for the important things. So what can you do? One option that's becoming more popular is outsourcing the process of patching. Can save an organization time and money, can lead to improved security, it can provide a verifiable SLA or service level agreement that guarantees that patches will be applied within specific time frames. But like everything else, it comes with costs. And in this case, those costs can go beyond just the dollars that have to exchange hands to contract with the service. One example, um, an organization can lose visibility and control over the patches. The IT team might not know precisely which patches have been applied and which still need to be applied. Now, I think most people would say that if your organization has the capability, taking care of patches themselves is probably the best idea. So small to mid-sized organizations that don't necessarily have the resources to keep up with patching are the first wave of organizations taking advantage of this. And we're seeing more and more companies from different areas add the capability of patching. For example, there are companies like Onalytics that have added co-managed patching as a service to its security solution. So security companies are adding patching. Uh, discovery companies, those that go out and do inventories to tell you what versions of everything you're running are beginning to add patch management and patching as a service to their portfolio. But still, what you're doing here ultimately, and you have to recognize this, is paying a third party to take responsibility for a critical part of your infrastructure and your processes. Now, as these groups 
take over more and more accounts, they are relying more and more on automation. And this is the same kind of automation in many cases that your company could apply if it chose. Now, from where I sit, patch management software, the applications that automate patch management are absolutely critical because they can take care of going through and patching not only all of your servers, but the various endpoints that need to be kept up to date. And they can do it without requiring that you develop, that you devote multiple individuals to the task. We've seen in the past that there are critical pieces of the infrastructure that require extraordinary access to things like administrator credentials. And if those pieces of the infrastructure are compromised, if those services are compromised, well, then your administrator credentials are compromised. So is it worth it? Where do we come down? Brian, I, I want to turn to you first and ask you, what do you think about this? Is it a risk worth taking for every company? Or should companies really carefully look at what their capabilities are before they consider a, a service like this? You know, this is one of those questions that I keep asking over and over again. You know, how much trust am I going to put in the outsourcing? You know, whether it's, you know, someone, you know, sweeping the floors and taking out the trash, you know, we're giving them key cards so they can get in after hours or credentials, administrator credentials, so we can patch the machines. You know, I know there's some granularity. Active Directory definitely has it. Um, I'll show my age. Novell Netware certainly had it. Um, but things like Unix, some of those, some of it just doesn't have enough granularity. So you're, no matter what, patching as a service is going to require a level of trust that you're outsourcing. Now, is it better to just leave it unpatched? No, that that's asking for trouble. Um, but I got to foresee that patching as a service is going to come with a lot of liability insurance. You know, as a um, certain type of consultant, I carried a million dollars with an extra million dollar umbrella um, in liability insurance in case I messed up. Um, what are the patching as a service companies going to do? How are they going to make you whole if your administrator credentials have been stolen because of their negligence? Um, those are questions you definitely have to ask yourself. Um, if you're a small company and you just can't keep up, you know, having unpatched systems at, needs to be weighed with, you know, outsourcing your um, authority, you know, outsourcing the credentials. There's a lot of interesting things that need to happen. Um, it is a really, really new industry. And there's a lot of questions, just like service level agreements for things like um, clouds have changed radically, radically over just the last couple of years. Uh, I think, pets, you know, patching as a service is going to have to, you know, grow up a bit. Uh, but it sounds like a really, really good idea, especially if you just can't keep up. Well, I was going, Lou, it's good to see your face here because you were going to be next. I was going to ask you, you know, you deal with the creation of the software. And so from where you sit, I mean, how important is it? Is this something that, companies should consider moderately important or is keeping up to date on patches something that should be elevated beyond the merely important to the urgent and critical level for most companies? So, you know, I thought I was going to get away skate free here without any answer to that question. Um, it's, it's, you know, patching is a challenge and I think it should be at the top of the list for every organization. I mean, we just talked about, 
you know, in, even in the case of VMware, where you know people's VMs were were still being exploited because of the fact that they didn't take the time to patch, you know, and there was already a fix for it. Um, you know, this happens with many organizations. I work with a ton of organizations that are always already architecting services, with cloud native services and applications, and they don't take the time to, you know, even if it's a manual deploy of an update. Um, to their services. You know, if you're using things like Kubernetes or, uh, or Docker containers, you, know, you have to sometimes go and patch the host VMs uh, that are running these things. And, you know, and sometimes that can affect your services, your applications and your software. And I can tell you that that's a challenge for an organization to have to deal with that. You know, why is there some side effects based off of these updates? And, you know, do I have to take my service down? Am I patching in the right order? Am I, you know, are, you know, services running or not running? And it just becomes a very big challenge and a very big time sink. And, you know, a lot, it costs a lot. Um, and I, like we were saying in this article in the discussion, it sometimes takes a lot of resources and a lot of knowledge on how to do this right efficiently and reliably. And I think that it should be the top of mind for any organization because it me could mean the fact that their software and services is vulnerable and so is their data and their customers. And so taking it, you know, taking it seriously could mean the difference between uh, a business and an organization and an application being up and one being down and one being no longer trusted. So I think it's it's definitely something they need to to put as prize zero for most things that they do. Well I think it's important to note that it is something that most companies are aware of to the point that having a cloud service provider keep up with the patching and updates is one of the reasons many companies give for moving to the cloud in the first place. Uh, it's complicated. It's critical. And most companies would rather not have to do it. But if they do, a service might be the way to go if the conditions are met.